Hello, I'm William Bell. Welcome to our study on premillennialism. This is part one, so we encourage you to watch part two immediately following this one to get the complete picture. Also, we want to encourage you to visit us at our website, which is www.allthingsfulfilled.com. Now, here are the objectives for the study. We're going to define premillennialism. We'll examine a few major tenets or beliefs. We'll analyze the millennium in Revelation chapter 20. We'll chart the premillennial view of the end. Then we'll compare major beliefs in premillennialism with the Bible. We'll also expose the teaching by Jesus' parables. And then we'll chart the Bible view of the end and then offer our summary and conclusion. Now, what is premillennialism? The word pre means before. Millennium means a thousand, translated from the Latin word milli, but also the Greek word kilius means a thousand and annus means year. And thus we have a thousand years. This doctrine teaches that Christ returns to rapture the righteous saints before the millennium of a literal 1,000 years. So our question is, are the righteous raptured? Premillennialism asserts that a rapture of the saints will occur before, during, or after the seven-year Great Tribulation. At the end of this tribulation period, Christ will then reign, or Christ will then return to reign on earth on David's literal throne in literal Jerusalem for a literal thousand years. It also asserts that the wicked are left behind. So the wicked are not raptured, but are left behind. Therefore, only the wicked are left on earth during the alleged millennium of 1,000 years. Now, let's examine this doctrine from Revelation chapter 20. Because in Revelation 20, the word millennium occurs six times in the first seven verses. And this is where the doctrine occurs finds its origin, or at least where it allegedly finds its origin. But when we examine the text, we will find that it simply is not there. The premillennial doctrine of the millennium is believed, as we said, to be taken from the first seven verses of Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation 20 and verse 4, we find that contrary to the doctrine of premillennialism, it is the righteous who sit on thrones in the millennium. Also, it is the righteous martyrs who had not worshipped the beast or his image and who witnessed to Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the righteous, not the wicked, who lived and reigned with Christ in the millennium. They are called blessed and holy, and therefore they are not wicked. They are also the priests of God and of Christ, and they live with Christ a thousand years. That cannot be a picture of the wicked. Premillennialism gets it wrong right from the start. Now, let's examine this chart on premillennialism. Here is a premillennial view of the end. First, we have the death of Christ indicated here by the cross. And then following that, we have his ascension. Now, premillennialists assert that Jesus failed in his mission to establish the kingdom and therefore substituted the church age, which is the current age that they assume that we live in now. At the end of the church age will come the millennium. Now, they also, as we've stated, affirm that the rapture of the saints occur either during, before, or after this seven-year great tribulation, at which time Christ will reign in Jerusalem during the millennium, that is, following the seven-year great tribulation. So Christ is going to come back to the earth reign on earth a thousand years in the millennium, and this is where they say that the wicked are going to be left behind in the millennium. Then Christ will fight the battle of Armageddon at the end of the millennium, defeat all of his enemies, death, Hades, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, who are cast into the lake of fire at the great white throne judgment, and then usher in the eternal kingdom at the end of the age. Now, What we want you to do here is watch part two, because in the second part, we're going to give you more uh, important information on the millennium.